Another person that I go by on a regular basis to on YouTube is a girl, her, her name is uh, Mary Claire and she has her YouTube channel uh, Trust Me I'm Weird but she's also Forever Your Nerds uh, and she has another one called Trust Me I'm Portable and she's a bit of a quirky egg and I seem to like the quirky egg types. Uh, that's my preference. There's a whole variety of types of YouTubers out there and you know a lot of the guys are doing their standard guy humor and so on and so forth and that includes uh, uh, Shane Dawson whose uh, comments are rather um, well they're not to my taste let's put it this way his, his videos and my tastes are more along the lines of the quirky eggs but of course when you run into these quirky eggs they are going to have issues they're going to have their point of view and their weirdness which is uh, part of what makes them uh, fun and interesting people. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you agree with everything that they do or, or everything that they say and uh, typically you leave uh, the, the, their opinions alone uh, because simply you don't want to rain on their parade. At some point in time though if the uh, the uh, the opinions keep coming out and that this is part they are they are in some cases they are opinionated people then you have to find a tactful way of saying well yes you are entitled to your opinion it's great that you have your opinion but it's your opinion and I have my opinion and uh, she has recently and as most quirky people do and sort of run into these situations is the typical product of the indoctrination that is going on in the schools vis-a-vis -vis the uh, socialist issues and this is talking about um, things like global warming and uh, all those touchy-feely uh, socialist issues uh, that really when you look at them carefully uh, realize that they are indoctrination because they haven't been told everything that they need to know and really to make what they call an informed decision or an informed choice. So rather than titling this and this is going to be separate uh, in addition to being part of Big Bang Theory, well, this is going to be entitled Gay Mythology. Because she's talking about gay marriage. And what she doesn't understand is that uh, because a large chunk of what socialism is and claims to be has not been proven, and actually in many cases has been proven false, uh, it is no longer the de facto, based on science fact, that it, that it pretends and claims to be. It is yet another religion and as such re as, as its religion it has its own myths and mythologies. And inside of this uh, mythology of uh, homosexuality there is the idea and the mythology that uh, homosexuals are born this way. Well if you understand psychology from the perspective and you really understand that it is uh, from its original term psychologia uh, meaning uh, study of the soul then you understand that the soul, which is not part of the physical body, can become ill in just the same manner that the physical body can become ill. And all you have to do is take a look at mentally ill people on the streets and you can see this. And men, one of the key components to mentally ill people is that in many cases they don't feel themselves to be diff any, any different in, in to society from other people and their complaints are often that uh, they are mistreated because they are different. And, yeah, there's many cases. People who are different are mistreated. I mean, I've been mistreated about a large chunk of my life because I am different. I don't follow a standard mold. And people treat me as different as such. Uh, that hasn't really affected or uh, prevented me from doing what I want in life, though. Other people, it 
becomes a major stumbling block. It becomes an issue. They feel, and this is you see this in movies over and over again from even back in the 1980s when you have the movie Revenge of the Nerds, that everyone has to be all-inclusive. We have to accept all enough, uh, one another. And the thing is, you don't have to accept one another. People are going to have different choices and different points of view. And, of course, there's always, if you're talking about the larger sense of society, and you're talking about laws and why something is legal and not legal, and that's because there are consequences for changing the laws. There, there are consequences beyond your own interest. And you have to look at these consequences for these changes uh, in, in order to say whether something should or shouldn't be illegal or how something should and shouldn't be treated within the law or not within the law. And this becomes the issue of gay marriage. Uh, gay marriage is one of those things now that everyone's saying, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Why can't two people love each other? Well, because marriage, as it's defined, is a very quirky thing. It's a very dangerous thing because the Christian standard of marriage is not the only standard out there. There have been, throughout the thousands of years of human history, of a multitude of different standards, including brother and sister sibling marriages, where the two brother and sister love each other and they get married and have children. Well, we know biologically and genetically what happens. We know that there are genetic defects, there's no, we know there's deformities, there's a whole number of issues, the, uh, biological, biological issues that pop up when a brother and sister marry. This is true when a father and daughter marry, or a mother and a brother. In other words, you cannot be marrying someone, even, even though you love them, within your own family, because there is a genetic, uh, a genetic consequence to this. But yet, although this, in, for, for most of uh, civilized society, there's, there's been a law against intermarriage between brother and sister, between sister, there, this has not stopped this from going on in history. All you have to do is look at, take a look at the sister of, uh, look, look at the uh, city of Philadelphia. They call it the, the, the city of brotherly love. But if you know the Greek and you know the Greek where, where the word comes from, then it's not you know that the uh, word the, the Philadelphia is not the city of brotherly love. It's the sister of sisterly love. Because phila means it is for, aimed at a girl, right? It, 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 it's love of girl, right? So Philadelphia is the girl. And I think it's the reason why it's named that. And I do have to go back to my Greek and fix that up. Sorry about that. Uh, is it because uh, back in, in Egypt, when the Greeks were running Egypt, in order to keep um, the throne in the proper hands and the proper dynasty, you had brothers marrying sisters. And so, it, it, as a matter of fact, you know, this whole joke about uh, 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 the southern folk or, or, or Hicks, the hillbillies marrying each other in terms of marrying their own kin, well, this is something that was very royal. It was a, almost a royal standard to marry someone with, within your own family in order to keep the dynasty going. It was also true that uh, kings, in terms of their marriage, had concubines, had many different wives, in order to keep the, uh, the, uh, the, the bloodline, the, the royal line going. If the wife couldn't have an heir, the male heir then, that they needed, then he would go out to one of the many different mistresses, the various the, the, the concubines. These were his own personal uh, toys that he would play with sexually, and uh, that's how he would father his heir to the throne. And so, and the thing is that if you know, and this goes back again into history, you would go into the Hebrew society, and you'll understand that bar mitzvah is when uh, a, a man turns into a, a girl, a, man, a boy turns into a man, and there's the boss of Israel where a girl turns in, in, into a woman. And this is at the age of 12 and 13. Well, the thing is, is that at 12 and 13, back in the old agrarian standard, it was legal for, 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 uh, for parents to give away their daughters at the age of 13 to older men to provide for them. Now, this is something that we would call in today's society as ped pedophilia. But it's out there. And in fact, it still, it still exists in India today. In India today, if you go and look up the issue of, this, of, of a group of people called Dalits, you will find that, it's, it, that it is legal and is still practiced today that Dalits uh, 
uh, their children, as young as three years old, their girls, as young as three years old, can be betrothed and taken by a husband who is maybe 50, 60 years old. So, uh, so this practice of giving your children or taking children and marrying them off in arranged marriages is not something that has disappeared and it still exists. But as I imagine, if all these different things, the different standards of marriage, now have to become legal, because you said to one group, like the homosexuals, that yes, we will permit your marriages, even though it is morally against our 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 our, our, our founding constitution. You see, our constitution, the American constitution, uh, that exists today is based on Christian on, on Christian fundamentalism. And I'm not talking about the Christian fundamentals of the Christian right. Most Christians who exist today exist based on the Christian theology that has started 1000 AD and on. So in other words, uh, most Christian theologies exist uh, and began a thousand years after Christ. And most of them actually contradict what Christ initially taught. For example, if you go look at and go back into the Roman Catholic, the Crusades, which uh, created Christian armies and had Christian knights and had uh, uh, Christian monks leading raids on cities and killing scores of people in these Crusades. And you go back to the original uh, uh, Gospel of Christ and the original Church of Christ, you will find that, the, that this concept of holy war was something that was considered barbaric and wrong. It was sinful at the time, and that this view of holy war was something called a it was called a heresy. So much so that the original Christian church, this is where you have the split in the church between East and West. The East non-European Christian church stayed with the old church, stayed with the old belief, and the Western church, the Roman Catholic church, brought in a church that was based on hierarchy based on uh, kings and queens, based on brutality. And the Eastern Church, the non-European Church, viewed this European Church, this Western European Church, as an anti-Christian church. This is how far the views were from each other. Because Christ didn't get, get out, come, off the Christ, come off the cross and slaughter everyone and revenge for uh, his crucifixion. crucifixion. He, stayed, he said, and stayed peacefully on the cross and let the people kill him. And this was true of all the Christian martyrs. For, for, the, for the first 800 years, Christian martyrdom was about Christians who being executed simply for the belief, but not fighting back. They kept their belief, they, didn't, they refused to give up their belief, but they didn't fight, they weren't violent. And there was a whole, as a Christian, as, a Christian, as an original Christian, this thousand years is now completely gone. It's been completely erased in history. Uh, a large of a chunk of it was done by the Catholics. A large, then another chunk was done by the Muslims uh, to initially wipe out the entire history, uh, a thousand year history of the Middle East that was actually Christian and not, not Muslim. Uh, so those who call themselves Christian today, the fundamentalism, uh, and they talk about hating uh, homosexuals and stuff like that. That's not Christian. And this is not where our, our, our constitution comes from. It's not fundamentally Christian in terms of the Christian fundamental. It comes back from the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta looks back to pre-Norman England. That's prior to 1000 AD. It, prior to 1000 AD, uh, England did not follow European Christianity. It followed non-European Christianity. And it was considered to be part of the non-European uh, Christian uh, churches, and that included the non-European Christian church included Africa, it included Syria, it included Jerusalem, it included Turkey, what was present-day Turkey or, or Asia Minor, and it stretched all the way into India. The ancient church stretched all the way into India, and you can see the outgrowth as different philosophies, different ideas, different theologies came forward, they all brought forward with different standards of marriage. It was only in the Christian marriage, in the, in the first part of the Christian marriage, the first Christianity, that women, men and women were equal. 
men and women in the Byzantine Empire uh, prior to uh, the European, the rise of the European sphere, there were men and women doctors. There were uh, in the church the figures that that people looked up to. Not only were there the fathers, but they were the mothers too. There's ma there is many mothers in the early Christian church as there were fathers. There were fathers who looked up to the mothers. And so what happens, it wasn't a lopsided, male-dominated hierarchy that we see today. But the thing is, we live in an age of consequences, where if we went immediately and just threw out the laws, and this is what happens, and this is where socialism comes in. Socialism throws the laws of society into two forms of chaos, either anarchy or nihilism. Uh, anarchy is the more violent form that destroys everything and is active in its destruction and nihilism is a more peaceful form of, of, of uh, anarchy, of uh, formlessness. But on either one, both nihilism and anarchy uh, lead to dictatorships. This is the way it's been in history. Always, in every case, when socialism has popped up, You've had the anarchists and you've had the nihilists come up, they, they wipe out the, they become the counterculture, they wipe out the standard culture, and then in comes the totalitarian governments like Hitler, Stalin, both of those were socialists. Uh, Paul Pot of uh, the Khmer Rouge, he was socialist. And then when you start seeing what ends up happening, the, the consequences of what happens, you begin to see that, you know, you can't just simply toss out a law because someone disagrees with it or it's not fair to somebody else. You have to approach the situation of legal and not legal in a manner that if somebody wants their rights, that you have to actually have a standard in the law that can deal with negative consequences of these laws, even if someone brings up on these negative consequences themselves. And uh, to give you an idea of this and how this consequence actually uh, comes about is that uh, there has been an attempt to find genetic links to homosexuality. I have seen them from the journal Science. Uh, journal Science uh, has never been able to produce this journal. That, that this is where all the lab reports go. There has been no successful study that has ever found the genes uh, for homosexuality. None of it's been successful. So the view of homosexuality being born with it as being something natural is a myth. Is a myth. It's part of the, homosexuality, the homosexual mythology. As for uh, people loving each other, yes, people can love each other, but you're supposed to love each other as brother and sister. If, if you have another girl who's next to you, you love the girls have a, an a girls can go dance with each other, they can hold hands, they can kiss each other, and this is part of a girl's affection. What homosexuality does, and this can be seen for both boys and the girls, is so homosexuality sexualizes the what's supposed to be affection and turns affection into a sexual, a sexual experience, a sexuality behavior. Uh, and this is what in many cases causes a person as you go from account to encounter, encounter to encounter trying to find your happiness in life it always eludes you because you're never, never able to well if if a feeling is sexual that feeling of affection that you're desiring never comes back and this can become devastating particularly to girls and this is where a large chunk you see that there's a lot of unhappiness and to underscore the unhappiness that adults feel. Uh, adults are very depressing. Uh, it is also true that most adults now uh, from the age uh, even 45 on up or 40 on up, uh, it, it, which is in terms of the lifespan not that old, uh, a large chunk of, of society, most adults, are on some form of mood altering medication. They are on so fundamentally unhappy with that, so fundamentally depressed that they are on some form of antidepressant. And this is not something that's good to go into in terms of your health or any other things. Uh, on a spiritual level, if you believe that you're a spiritual person, 
there's a consequence to this as well. Because if you look, even let's say not at the Christian, uh, Christian uh, spiritual belief, but says that it's wrong, and not, not just because it's wrong, because if you go back into the text, the original text, and you start reading what's going on, what they say in Greek, which is where the original te text comes from, you'll find they talk about spiritual death, that homosexuality, in addition to sexuality on its own, leads to, to spiritual death. This same uh, sentiment comes up not only in Buddhism, but it comes up in Hinduism. You talk to, and I've talked to many Hindu families who are primarily conservative uh, from the old country, and they are very much against uh, homosexuality because it destroys the family. Most Indians, most Chinese, any, any uh, foreign uh, person who comes from a cultural background of family, homosexuality is viewed as a strong negative, as a taboo because it destroys the family. And they also view it, if you go into their religious text, they view this as homosexuality as something known as the left-hand path. The path to darkness. The left-hand path is the path to darkness, away from lightness, away from nirvana, away from spiritual enlightenment. And so the question is, when you uh, have these homosexual feelings, which can be dealt with, even though most psychologists who are failed and contradict themselves on a regular basis, uh, to the point that homosexuality as a feel itself really doesn't exist, because it's fundamentally contradicted itself. Uh, it can be said that homosexuality can be dealt. Homosexuality can be dealt with psychologically. It can be dealt with spiritually, and a person can be brought back to a more normal sense of lifestyle, assuming that this is what the person wants. This is the path that they want to go down. Then it is. It's not that it's going to be an easy path. It's, it's just that it's going to be uh, a path that can be followed. It can be achieved. Uh, it really depends on this is what you want to do. Uh, if you are homosexual and choose and believe you have a spirit, we have a soul, the question is for other people and how it affects other people. When you want to bring somebody else in, like let's say you have somebody you love and you want, to, you want them to become homosexual and they're not homosexual, but you want them to be homosexual so that you can have a relationship with them. And you're supposed to be, let's say, let's say you actually actually have not that kind of condition, but you have another person who is homosexual, willingly homosexual, and you want to have that relationship with them. If you love the person, do you want that person to, spirit, to, have the, to, to spiritually die? Do you want to destroy their soul? Is this a, something that's going to make you happy down the road as a consequence of the action you're taking now? If love, the true form of love, is about what you sacrifice for somebody else and making sure that somebody else, the person you love, is happy and has a better life or has the things that they want, and this is the form of true love, then seeking to destroy somebody for your own sense of gratification. That's not true love. That's selfishness. That's lust. It's not love. And the thing is, in today's society, in the indoctrination that goes on in school, in schools, they're bringing more and more, and you can see this in, on a daily basis, they're sexualizing children in school. They're turning them into whores. They're turning them into uh, what they call sexual beings. And there are a lot of people who believe, a lot of people believe, particularly in the educators, that, that people are sexual beings and it's their job to bring teenagers and kids into this sexual world, into their sexual being. This is the goal that they have. And then you need to decide whether this is for you or not. And I, I don't follow the mainstream. I, are, I, I, are, I say stand up for yourself. I say question what people are telling you. Now, I don't tell you, you know, just believe what I say. Go and check it out. And I'm also saying that when someone else tells you something, go check it out. Go look further and see what, what, if what they're telling you is true or not. See if they're telling you is indoctrination. If you are not allowed to question what they're teaching you, 
if you cannot ask fundamental and strong opposing questions, and they get angry at it, then you're looking at indoctrination. If you're forced to an assembly with no rebuttal to what's being said in the assembly, that's indoctrination. And more often than not, when you're indoctrinated into the mythology of homosexuality or the, or the mythology of socialism, there's an enormous amount of lies in there. And the question is, what do you want to do with your life? And this isn't something that, that says, I, I, I want you to be a bad person, or I, want to, I, I, I hate you, or anything like that. This is about questioning and finding your own path to happiness. And it can be done. You know, everyone takes their own path. I took an individual path. I'm an individual. I've never conformed to anything in my life. Still don't. And I've found a path of happiness. So it can be done. It just depends on what you want. Alright, so that's about it for the, this segment. Uh, is it? You're going to be able to watch this either in Big Bang Theory URL or you can watch it separate as a, as a separate, uh, as a separate uh, comment why. Alrighty, take it easy. Uh, hello everybody. This is an amendment to the uh, comment why uh, video that's coming out on uh, gay mythology and gay marriage. The reason that I am adding this amendment is that I have since realized that this is going to be a much larger discussion than I had initially thought it was going to be, and rather than sort of leaving it as a short little blurb that I put out there, there is more that's coming, uh, more that's putting, going to be coming out in the uh, in coming. Uh, Big Bang Theory RL episodes. And the way to deal with it is, and this is one of the reasons why I set up uh, the different components to uh, Big Bang Theory RL, uh, Y and Z, is to deal with uh, offshoots and interactions. So, uh, Comments Y is where, or I should say, uh, Big Bang Theory RL, uh, the Y component, the Y playlist, is where all the comments and discussions uh, are going to go. So. What I'm going to be doing is, because this is such a, uh, let me say, controversial topic, what I'm going to do is something that really hasn't been done, is I'm going to leave the video comments open so that anyone who wants to can add a comment or reply to this in the video format, that's the format you feel comfortable with. I'm going to keep this in my comments uh, as academically oriented as possible. I am not going to be putting in my own personal opinions. I will state at the end of this video where I sit in this particular position in terms of qualifying who I am and how I come into this discussion. And that way you can sort of, for yourself, uh, because I am visible on the internet, determine where my bias is on this particular thing and sort of judge for yourself what the information is or isn't. Uh, so I am going to be leaving the video comments open. I'm going to be disabling the dislike button. So there's now no going to be voting up or down on this. The uh, the voting on this uh, is not going to happen because I have found that in many cases uh, the dislike button is abused to the point where comments are reviewed or removed. And this is coming as a warning. I'm not going to be censoring any comments on this list other than for inappropriate co sexual content. This is one thing that's not going to be, uh, if I find something like that, it's very simple, the video is going to be deleted. It's, 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 it's as simple as that. Um, and that's the only reason why it would be to be deleted. Is, but if you present any comment to this, uh, side of this, 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 uh, this discussion, it's not going to be deleted. And this is for both sides. I'm not going to be deleting comments. I'm not it doesn't matter if it offends one person or another. Free, as I say in my videos here, and this is at the end of this video here, free speech rules here. This means you may not like what the other person has to say, but they have a right to say it. They have a right to their own opinion. And, you know, we need, all need to allow each other to say and have our own beliefs. So, it, this isn't about attacking one group or another or being on one side or the other. This is about seeing what everybody has to say out in the open without any uh, uh, inducements or threats or 
censorship or anything like that. So, I hope this goes well. This is an experiment. I hope we don't get flagged and, t and, and pulled off, uh, uh, off off of YouTube being flagged as inappropriate. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Keep the, keep your comments as much as possible as PG. Right? There is there are ways to rephrase things to use proper terminology so that it does stay PG, so that we're not pulled into the 18 plus section. The eight, being pulled into the 18 plus section, being pulled into an adult section, kills the discussion. We want it for everybody. Because kids right now are being indoctrinated in schools, they're being uh, put into assemblies, where they're not given all the particular views. They need to see all these different things. So if we're going to, and this is based on a 14-year-old's uh, comments, and I'm going to give her credit for this, because this is, she did stand up, she did present an open, uh, an open argument, she wasn't offensive about her argument in her, in her position. She was very thoughtful about it. And so it, it, it deserves the credit that it, that it is due. And so this is where this is moving forward. So now I'm going to move on to the last section here of this video, of this uh, edition, the amendment, and bring out the qualifier, my qualifier. The qualifier is, is let you know where the producer and, and particularly myself where I sit in this situation here. This isn't a bragging about on this or on that. This is letting you know specifically who I am and where I sit in this situation here. I am a researcher. I'm a nerd. I'm particularly an astrophysicist. My astrophysics field started off in, in quantum mechanics particularly with, with the random walk and then eventually uh, as I moved out to explore the universe, it encompassed as many areas as I possibly as I possibly could incorporate. And this basically is done from a library's perspective, li a library research perspective, and which I will go into more detail at a later date because that's not important here and you will eventually understand it. But it does encompass a wide variety of areas. I've been doing this now for 20 years. The arguments I will be presenting will be from this perspective. It will be from a library science perspective. It will be researched. Some of the sources will be revealed. Some of the sources, because they are uh, hidden and in danger of being shut down, will not be revealed. So the sources that are not safe to be open will not be open and not be revealed. Uh, my background is Christian, but you need to know that there is a division in Christianity. There are basically three periods of Christianity, uh, well, for our particular argument, there are two periods of Christianity. There is pre-800 A.D. and then post-800 A.D. Post-800 A.D. is what most people know as Western Christianity or European Christianity. It is the, what developed much later on within Europe it, 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 and, and is what is considered to be Christian fundamentalism and goes as far back as Roman Catholicism, which is Western Christianity. I'm not from the Western Christianity, European Christianity background. My background is from Eastern Christianity. That is primarily, primarily Syria, Greece, Middle, uh, a large chunk of the Middle East, Africa, India, and so and, and, and it has roots all the way back 2,000 years, and is fundamentally and significantly different than what occurred, what emerged a thousand, uh, at 1,000 A.D. So, my background, that's where my Christian, Christian background comes from. You will see more about this because it does involve the Byzantine and Antiquity Studies Institute. And this is where I'll be coming in, bringing in my Christianity. I'll be bringing in stuff from the Byzantine and Antiquity Studies Institute. We'll be going into some of the Greek understanding. If there are people out there who understand uh, Sanskrit and have understanding of the uh, Hindu Vedas, uh, you're more than welcome to comment on this uh, on this situation and bring in these ideas uh, as it results to left hand and right hand right handed paths. Uh, and that being said, I think this is enough of a qualifier that uh, we can uh, proceed uh, with this discussion. Uh, I hope everyone has a good time. Uh, learn as much as you can. And if your opinion changes on thing, that's fine. If it doesn't change, then that's fine too. So anyways, uh, see you in the discussion group. Alright, take it easy.
to the library. And I am a librarian. I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.